Hey guys, how's it going? So today is going to be a bit of a mixed bag of projects. We're going to do a little cooking, iris transplanting, and then I need to keep tagging dahlias. Let me show you our forecast. Sorry if it's super glary, but I just wanted to show you we do have a 24 degree night coming up in one week, which means I need to get those dahlias tagged. And I've only got two rows left. I have been plugging away on it a little bit and there's really not much to that. We're gonna save that to the very end of the day and then I'll just get whatever I can get done. But it's much easier to tag dahlias when you can see their blooms so that you tag them correctly, or at least for me, because I get them confused so easily. So we're starting here in the Hartley for a couple of reasons. One, it is a windy outside today. So when we are outside, I probably won't do a tremendous amount of talking because the gusts just keep coming in and that makes it really hard to hear. Uh, but I also need to clip a little bit of rosemary for what we are going to be making. And I mentioned this recipe in a recent video. I was just gonna try it out. We did, and it was delicious. It's apple sausage stuffed butternut squash. It's so good. We just came from the greenhouse. I got some sage out of our green stock garden. It smells really good. And now we just need a little bit of rosemary. I'm gonna take it from right here. That'll be perfect. We need to run to the root cellar and get some garlic and onion and a couple of butternut squash. Now, this recipe, which we will link down below, is from a website called Downshiftology, and it calls for one, like two and a half pound butternut, which is what I did last time. Uh, but I want to make them in smaller like serving size because it's even a half of a two and a half pound butternut squash that's pretty big. Uh, so I've got some smaller butternuts I want to grab. One more thing. Pedro's crew is here. They are starting the brick edging right behind the Hartley uh, to finish that area along the driveway and along where our benches are. So I want to show you where they're starting and then at the end of the day we will look to see what progress they've made. They've already made a tremendous amount of progress. So you can see they've already dug it out. What they're gonna do is bring bricks over, bring them down and back behind the bench, and then they're gonna do a brick edge along the driveway here, just to kind of button this whole area up. They're over on that side already starting to place bricks. And we didn't grab a camera and put it out earlier this morning, and they are so fast. They get so much done so quickly. I thought we better get out here and at least look at a before shot. I hope you can kind of see that pink line. I came out and uh, drew a line out just as sort of a guide here. But when that's all done, we're gonna bring gravel in. So we'll have a little gravel walkway up in that will run in front of the bench. The bench will actually be bumped further back than that. They just moved it out of their way, but it should just finish this area up beautifully. And then on this side, the bricks will continue around and they'll meet the concrete opening over here. You can see my little <laughs> brick edging that I did a few years ago and it worked well, but we want it to all match and it will meet up right here with the chicken coop landing. Right, is that what you would call it? Anyway, exciting stuff. So happy they were able to get that done this fall. Currently 42 degrees in the root cellar. The humidity is way too high in there though. Yeah, 97%, that's not good. So we're gonna have to kick the fan up, I think, um, to help combat that. You can see we're pretty full in here. We haven't even brought dahlia tubers in yet. Uh, you can see peppers from my last harvest. <laughs> They've all been given away, they just haven't been picked up yet. Um, this is a really good place to store them, so I, you know, as long as we have the space, I'll store them indefinitely. We've got some melons from our raised bed harvest still. Uh, this is another little pepper harvest I did before. And then we've just got crates and crates and crates of onions, squash. We've got garlic. We've got shallots. This is the size I want to use today. I'm thinking we'll go with two of, well, maybe three. So one, two, three. We need garlic. And let's do a walla walla. What? Beautiful. And all of our potatoes are in these baskets right here and these crates right here <laughs> so much. I just love a stocked root cellar. I don't know what it is. It just makes you feel good going into winter knowing you have well food and like not fresh like fresh off the vine but as fresh as you can get i mean you grow it yourself in your own garden and that feels good okay we are ready oh goodness gotta walk with the wind here we're gonna run in and get our butternut squash prepped and baking and while it's baking i think we'll run out and dig the iris try to be efficient with our time because it takes roughly for the big squash 40 to 45 minutes to bake for these smaller ones I'm going to give them about 30 and check them at that point they might be done I put the umbrella down <laughs> it's all cockeyed there we go that's better
smell this? Squash. Squash. Yeah. Squash. Okay, 30 minutes, you guys. Really, I have about 15 minutes because we need to start the filling for the squash about halfway through baking time. But I wanna go give the treats to the chickens and at least start digging the iris. Hey, girls. Oh yeah, anything with seeds, they are all about it starting to molt. They molt at the weirdest time of year. It seems like this is the time of year where they would want to keep all of their feathers when it's starting to get colder. Huh. So there's the iris right there. This is where we stopped the other day with the maintenance around the chicken coop. We've got a couple different varieties. There's one that stays a little bit smaller and it's like the traditional bearded iris. And then there's one that has really upright, like very strong vertical. I don't know what kind they are. They're like a blue and gold. They're real pretty, but they're just way too tall for this space. So I think what we'll do is we'll get them all cut back. Then we'll go in, make our filling and get that all done. And then we'll come back out to dig. That might be the best way to go here. Well, not only does that give us a really clear picture as to how much this area will be cleaned out once those are all gone, it'll make it a lot easier for them to be dug up because I can see where all their roots are. It really isn't that much. It's kind of like this section right here. And then there's a little section that kind of goes around the tree trunk. And once we get the hibiscus out of here as well, then we'll really be able to see the canopy of this tree. And it's just so gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, and you know, all of these red crab apples were white blooms in the spring, so you can imagine how loaded this one gets. It's been a few years since I've planted it though, so I can't remember the variety. I'll try to find that and put it on the screen for you. Now that that's done, let's head back in and we're gonna make our apple sausage stuffing. Here are the ingredients. This is everything that's gonna go into the stuffing. We've got our mild Italian sausage, spinach, dried cranberries, pecan chips, onion, sage, rosemary, garlic, and an apple. Let's go ahead and check our squash. Oh yeah, that's feeling pretty soft, 30 minutes. 
After we make the stuffing and put it in the squash, everything will go back in the oven for a little bit. So we'll just let the butternut squash chill here for a second on the counter while we whip up the stuffing. Everything's chopped now, so we'll drizzle some olive oil into the bottom of our pan, make sure it's nice and hot. Now the recipe calls for you to cook the sausage first and then to add the onions and garlic, but I like my onions and garlic to be nicely cooked down before I add in my meat. Add in some pepper, a little bit of salt too. Boy, I did a real fine job of cutting these onions. My word. I was at a really weird angle. <laughs> I was trying not to knock the camera over. All right, so we're breaking these onions up a bit. Okay, that's looking good. So now we'll add in our sausage, the full pound. And we'll break that up. Okay, so we're just gonna stir this together, let those flavors marry, and we'll just cook it until the Italian sausage is all brown and delicious looking. Okay, sausage is looking good. So now we're going to put in our herbs and our apple. And we'll just saute all of these together for just a few minutes. Let that apple soften up a little bit. All right, that's looking really good. So now we'll put in a couple of handfuls of spinach. We'll let that wilt down. Okay, so now we're gonna remove it from the heat. We're gonna add in our pecans. And some craisins. Give it a good stir. Then we're gonna be ready to stuff our squash. Okay, so we need to flip our butternut squash over. It's been out long enough, it's easy to handle. It's still really warm though. Play-Doh time. Um. So you can scoop some of your squash out if you want to so that it holds more filling, or you can just leave it, either way. Now we're just gonna take a bunch of our filling and we're gonna fill up each one of these squash halves. Look at these, aren't they so pretty? We're gonna put them back in the oven for five minutes. Okay, they are all done. Don't they look so good? So many autumn flavors right there, and that's just a whole meal right there. I'm so excited to eat it.
All right, guys, I'm ready to dig in. I brought it out here to the Hartley because it just seems appropriate. And it's so pretty. You can see all of the spices, like the herbs in there. And you get sweetness from both the apple and the cranberry. And of course, the Italian sausage has a ton of flavor. It's just so yum. Oops. Mm-hmm. Yum. All right, guys, we are back outside getting ready to dig those iris. Thankfully, they're very shallow rooted. Being around that base of that crab apple, if you were digging out something else that might have deeper roots, it could be a little bit harder, but I think this will go pretty quick. I'm gonna get a couple of crates or a couple of baskets so I can keep the two varieties sort of separate and I'm trying to stay out of their way. So I have parked the gator right here, so I'm gonna be trekking it a little bit of a distance. Oh, the wind had died down a bit. This will work. So let's get these dug up and put out in the south garden. I'm nice and full from our lunch. Okay, it's a little bit loud because he's compacting the soil over there, but we got all of the iris out. Oh, I feel like that tree can breathe. And I initially thought I was gonna leave the lambs here and I might, but I think maybe having a very short growing something in here, like maybe a really short perennial geranium would look really pretty in here, just as kind of like a floor underneath this tree because the branches are pretty low and I really want to be able to see it. Like I want it to be highlighted. I did paw around in here and this trunk was buried quite far. I've got some suckers I need to cut off of it, but I followed it down to where the roots start here. I feel like that was good for the tree, just moving everything out from it. These monstrosities are next. Oh my goodness. They're gonna be really pretty though shortly with the bright yellow fall color. And then here's a look from the front. So you can actually see underneath through to the chicken coop oh so nice and this is what we ended up with this whole clump is all one like it came out really easily you can see how shallow rooted they are uh, another good example of how iris grow like right here see that how they spread like rhizomes like that underneath the ground very shallow and then form new roots and shoot up new plants so you can separate these like this one will come right off. This is typically how you buy them. They're like one little rhizome here. And then usually, you know, they're cut foliage just like this. That's how I've seen them anyway. So you could go through and you could separate all of these, which I probably should do, but I probably won't do today. See that? And then this clump here was the one growing right directly underneath the crab apple that was really tall. So a little bit of a different growth habit. Okay, we're gonna go find a sunny spot and get them replanted. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm working with the shorter variety first. I decided to go ahead and separate them. From what we just dug up in that small little space, I got over 90 rhizomes. 90. I just did a quick Google search and I could maybe find them cheaper than this, but the cheapest price I saw just in the first page was $5 per rhizome. Depending on the variety, they go up from there. There were some for $15 per rhizome. I don't know what variety this is, but 90 times five is $450. That's why sometimes it is 100% worth it to move things and separate them and oh, that just makes you feel good, doesn't it? So we're gonna have a great big old drift of iris right in here. It'll start right by the sedum. These are a Lick Lickfield or Litchfield Angel Rose, which gets quite large. So we'll have a nice drappy grassy texture right below that. And it will tuck in behind this lilac toward the nine bark right there. And then we'll start a drift of something new right in front here, kind of where my kneeling pad is. So it'll kind of tuck behind the drift of whatever else goes in here. I think that'll be beautiful. Instead of biotoning every single individual little hole that I dig up, I just spread it over the top of the whole area, rhizomes and all, and it will just kind of get churned in and mixed in when I'm digging. So anyway, super happy with that. Let's get these in the ground. Got them all planted. I recounted there are 93 iris in this space. I planted them roughly eight to 10 inches apart from one another, so they'll have a little time to fill in. I cannot wait to see what they look like though. Oh, when I have a little bit of free time, I'm gonna go through my pictures and see if I can't find what color these were blooming the last time they were in bloom, which I don't remember noticing them this spring. <laughs> They're usually in kind of a jumble with everything else that's in bloom and there are tulips back there and of course the crab apple blooms. So anyway, I'll go back through and see if I can remember. I'm kind of hoping they're purple, but I think they're probably either purple, champagne color, which I would love to, or a pale yellow. Anything would be fine out here, honestly. And seeing them all in one clump versus 93 plants, it's so awesome. Now I am gonna wait to water them in. I think we've got rain on the forecast two days from now, which might be plenty for these. If we don't get enough to like fully saturated the soil, I'll come out here and give them a little bit more. But when I broke some of those rhizomes apart, there were fresh cut ends. It's kind of like letting a succulent cut heal, which they still will heal even though they're underneath the soil. It takes them a little bit longer, but there's still oxygen exchange and things like that. So I don't wanna introduce water right away to fresh open cuts like that. So we'll wait a couple days on that. So this right here is what we're left with. Let's go find a spot. This is a purple and pink corner. And because these iris have some gold in them, I think we'll skip, but boy, wouldn't it be pretty to have that texture right in here, that strappy, tall texture. We'll have to find a different color of iris, a pink one maybe put in here. Ruby Chip Jr. Budley is looking amazing October 22nd. Oh my gosh. That would be beautiful right in here. That is gonna be beautiful. 
So there are 40 of that variety right there. And again, I'm just gonna let these be. The soil was actually more moist over in this section as opposed to the other side where we just planted. Uh, but I will hold off and then we may water later on this week if needed. Oh gosh, there's some pretty color in this area though. I just have to show you this. These are the Miss Ruby and then the Ruby chips are the ones we just looked at. Look at the Brandywine Viburnum. Aren't they the most beautiful berries? And if you look through this area right here, you see the Miss Rubies, the Brandywine, straight through the Niagara, uh, Panicum, and then the Tiger Eye Sumax. Oh, I love it. We do not have much time left, but I'm going to tag just a few dahlias because a few is better than none. I'm gonna go grab the tagging tape out of the truck. I just had to go pick up more this morning because I ran out. And then we may get 10 done. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, here we are. We've got this row done, this row's done, this row is done, and these two rows are almost done. So I started at the other end and I worked all the way down to where those big tall white ones are. And then I started in on this end because I thought I'd just work toward that really thick patch from both sides. And I was tagging on either side and I ran out of tape. Let's see, right about, right about here. So if I could get from here to just that big thick patch of white ones down there done, that would mean all I have left to do in the next couple of days is this full row and then there's just a part row there, which would not take me too long. So about 20 feet worth of dahlias. That's about 40 dahlias. We can do it. Here we go. So what I do is I just write the name of the dahlia variety on this red tape and then tie it around the base of the plant. Pretty simple. We made it a little bit further than I thought we were going to, so I'm really happy. So now all of these rows have been tagged. I made it about 15 feet down this row, and I did the first two on this one. <laughs> so I have basically this amount left times two. So I'll just need to get in there and get that one done. There's some really pretty ones. Like this one's called Noel. Look at that, bees are loving it. This one's the red labyrinth right here. I love the yellow water lilies. I think they're so beautiful. And there's some beautiful lilac thyme down there. The hapet blue eyes right here, love those. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today's projects. I told you it was gonna be a mixed bag. I kinda like days like that though. It kinda keeps you moving, uh, doing different things. And I don't know, I, that feels fun to me. Gosh, this is a pretty one. Every time, this one just catches my eye. Sorry, I just had to stop for a second. This is a la mode. Honeybee also loving that one. Oh, so pretty. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.